Neo Advaita, also called the Satsang movement and nondualism, is a new religious movement, emphasizing the direct recognition of the non existence of the I or ego without the need of preparatory practice. Its teachings are derived from, but not authorized by, the teachings of the 20th century sage Ramana Maharshi, as interpreted and popularized by H. W. L. Poonja and several of his Western students. It is part of a larger religious current called Immediatism by Arthur Verslaus, which has its roots in both Western and Eastern spirituality. Western influences are Western esoteric traditions like Transcendentalism, and New Age Millennialism, Self Empowerment, and Self Therapy. Neo-Advaita makes little use of the traditional language or cultural frames of Advaita Vedanta, and some have criticized it for its lack of preparatory training, and regard enlightenment experiences induced by Neo-Advaita as superficial. <laughs> Teachings The basic practice of Neo-Advaita is self-inquiry, via the question, Who am I? or simply the direct recognition of the non-existence of the I or ego. This recognition is taken to be equal to the Advaita Vedanta recognition of the identity of Atman and Brahman, or the recognition of the formless self. According to Neo-Advaitans, no preparatory practice is necessary, nor prolonged study of religious scriptures or tradition, insight alone suffices. Punja, who is credited as one of the main instigators of the Neo-Advaita movement, saw this realization as in itself liberating from karmic consequences and further rebirth. According to Punja, karmic tendencies remained after enlightenment, but the enlightened person was no longer identified with them and, therefore, did not accrue further karmic consequences. According to Cohen, Punja insisted that the realization of the self had nothing to do with worldly behavior, and he did not believe fully transcending the ego was possible. For Punja, ethical standards were based on a dualistic understanding of duality and the notion of an individual agent, and therefore were not indicative of non dual enlightenment. For Punja, the goal was the realization of the self, the illusory realm of relative reality was ultimately irrelevant. History According to Lucas and Frawley, the spiritual root of Neo-Advaita is Ramana Maharshi, whose teachings, and method of self-inquiry, could easily be transposed to North America's liberal spiritual subculture. Popular interest in Indian religions goes as far back as the early 19th century, and was stimulated by the American transcendentalists and the Theosophical Society. In the 1930s Ramana Maharshi's teachings were brought to the West by Paul Brunton, a theosophist, in his A Search in Secret India. Stimulated by Arthur Osborne, in the 1960s Bhagawat Singh actively started to spread Ramana Maharshi's teachings in the USA since the 1970s Western interest in Asian religions has seen a rapid growth. Ramana Maharshi's teachings have been further popularized in the West via H. W. L. Punja and his students. Punja, better known as Papaji told, inferred, or allowed hundreds of individuals to believe they were fully enlightened simply because they'd had one, or many, powerful experiences of awakening." It were those students who initiated the Neo-Advaita, or Satsang, movement, which has become an important constituent of popular Western spirituality. It is being spread by websites and publishing enterprises, which give an easy access to its teachings. The Ramana effect Lucas has called the popularization of Ramana Maharshi's teachings in the West, the Ramana effect. According to Lucas, Ramana Maharshi was the greatest modern proponent of Advaita Vedanta, well known for emphasizing the enquiry of the question, Who am I? as a means to attain awakening. According to Lucas, following Thomas Sordas, the success of this movement is due to a portable practice, and a transposable message. Ramana Maharshi's main practice, self-inquiry via the question, who am I, is easily practicable in a non-institutionalized context. His visitors and devotees did not have to adopt the Vedantic culture, nor to commit themselves to an institution or ideology, to be able to practice self-inquiry. Ramana's teachings are transposable into a Western context. 
Ramana Maharshi himself did not demand a shift in religious affiliation, and was himself acquainted with Western religions, using quotes from the Bible. Neo-Advaita teachers have further de-emphasized the traditional language and world frame of Advaita, using a modern, psychologized world frame to present their teachings as a form of self-help, which is easily accessible to a larger audience. <laughs> Western discourses The Western approach to Asian Enlightenment traditions is highly eclectic, drawing on various Asian traditions, as well as numerous Western discourses such as psychology, science, and politics. Neo Advaita uses Western discourses, such as New Age millennialism, Zen, self empowerment, and self therapy, to transmit its teachings. It makes little use of the traditional language or cultural frames of Advaita Vedanta and is framed in a Western construction of experiential and perennial mysticism, to the disregard of its social, ethical and political aspects. This, modern experiential and perennialist mystical framework, emphasizes perennialism, the idea that there is a common, mystical core to all religions, which can be empirically validated by personal experience. It has pervaded the Western understanding of Asian religions, and can be found in Swami Vivekananda and Sarvpali Radhakrishnan's Neo-Vedanta, but also in the works of D.T. Suzuki and his decontextualized and experiential account of Zen Buddhism. It can also be found in the Theosophical Society, and the contemporary New Age culture, with influences like Aldous Huxley's The Perennial Philosophy and The Doors of Perception, and writers like Ken Wilber. Greg Lawhood also mentions Neo Advaita as an ingredient of cosmological hybridization, a process in which spiritual paradises are bound together. As exemplified in American Transcendentalism, New Age, Transpersonal Psychology and the works of Ken Wilber are examples, Brown and Leladaki place this hybridization in a structurationist approach, pointing out that this is an invented tradition, which is a response to a novel situation, although it claims a continuity with a historic past, which is largely factitious. Brown and Leladaki see these newly emerging traditions as part of Western Orientalism, the fascination of Western cultures with Eastern cultures, but also the reduction of Asian societies, its people, practices and cultures to essentialist images of the other. Brown and Leladaki also note that this Orientalism is not a one-way affair, but that there has been a dynamic interaction between Asian and Western representatives of various religious traditions over the last 150 years, and that this blending of thought and practice is a co creation from modernist religious movements in both East and West. According to Arthur Verslaus, Neo Advaita is part of a larger religious current which he calls immediatism. The assertion of immediate spiritual illumination without much if any preparatory practice within a particular religious tradition. Its origins predate American transcendentalism. In American Gurus, from transcendentalism to New Age religion, Verslaus describes the emergence of immediatist gurus, gurus who are not connected to any of the traditional religions, and promise instant enlightenment and liberation. These include Eckhart Tolle, Ram Das, and Andrew Cohen. Immediatism refers to a religious assertion of spontaneous, direct, unmediated spiritual insight into reality typically with little or no prior training, which some term enlightenment. According to Verslaus, immediatism is typical for Americans, who want the fruit of religion, but not its obligations. Although immediatism has its roots in European culture and history as far back as Platonism, and also includes pernealism, Verslaus points to Ralph Waldo Emerson as its key ancestor, who emphasized the possibility of immediate, direct spiritual knowledge and power. Criticism Neo-Advaita has been called a «controversial movement» and has been criticized, for its emphasis on insight alone, omitting the preparatory practices. It has also been criticized for its references to a «lineage» of Ramana Maharshi, whereas Ramana never claimed to have disciples and never appointed any successors. <laughs> insight and practice <laughs> <laughs> 
Topic: <laughs> Insight alone is not enough. Some critics say that seeing through the illusion of ego is the main point of Neo-Advaita, and that this does not suffice. According to Kaplan, the enlightenment experiences induced by these teachers and their satsangs are considered to be superficial. Some teachers, like Jeff Foster and Andrew Cohen, have admitted that their own insight or awakening did not put an end to being a human being with personal, and even egoistical, feelings, aspirations and fears. Cohen admitted that this spiritual bypass even resulted in the mental abuse of some of his students. Topic. Practice is necessary According to Dennis Waite, Neo-Advaita claims to remove ignorance, but does not offer help to remove ignorance. According to Kaplan, traditional Advaita Vedanta takes years of practice, which is quite different from the Neo-Advaita claims. Classical Advaita Vedanta uses the fourfold discipline sadhana katastaya to train students and attain moksha. Years of committed practice is needed to sever or destroy the occlusion, the so-called vasanas, samskaras, bodily sheaths and vrittis, and the granthi or not forming identification between self and mind, and prepare the mind for the insight into non-duality. Topic. Lineage Western critics object to the perceived relation between Ramana Maharshi and Neo-Advaita, noting that Ramana never promoted any lineage, did not publicize himself as a guru, never claimed to have disciples, and never appointed any successors. Despite this, there are numerous contemporary teachers who assert, suggest, or are said by others, to be in his lineage. These assertions have been disputed by other teachers, stating that there is no lineage from Ramana Maharshi. Critics have also noted that Ramana and like-minded teachers like Nisargadatta Maharaj did not charge fees or donations. Topic. Response In response to those criticisms, Tony Parsons has written that classical Advaita Vedanta is just another established religion with a proliferation of teachings and literature, all of which very successfully and consistently miss the mark," qualifying it as, "...one of the many systems of personal indoctrination promising the eventual spiritual fulfillment." According to Parsons, classical Advaita Vedanta, "...has no relevance to liberation because it is born out of a fundamental misconception." Namely that there is something like a separate individual who can become enlightened. According to Parsons, this is a direct denial of abiding oneness Advaita. See also <laughs> <laughs> Notes <laughs>